I want to take a moment to uh, preface uh, my introduction by saying that uh, when I started out in this business, I was considerably younger. I had considerably more and darker <laughs> hair. And uh, I, uh, I was running for alderman for the first time in 1983. And, and uh, uh, there was a state's attorney by the name of Richard M. Daly, who I went to see because I was concerned that the election was not going to be fair. And I know it's amazing for you to think that an election might not be fair in Chicago. But in the old <laughs> days, that did happen. And uh, I, I went to see that, the state's attorney. I expressed my concerns, and on election day, he had uh, assistant state's attorneys throughout the ward making sure that the precincts were being um, managed properly. And uh, I never forgot that. And when he became the mayor of the city of Chicago, um, I knew that he'd have the same attention and the same concern for doing what was right that he did uh, when he was uh, the state's attorney um, and not really running the city of Chicago. Um, since that time, I've had the opportunity to introduce him on a number of occasions. And I frankly never thought that I'd get to the point where it would be the last time I would introduce him in a public occasion. But this could be it. So I take this personal privilege to thank the man that has made my job so much easier. The individual who, when I went to see him in his office and said, I have a problem on Lincoln Avenue, he said, how can we address this? And uh, since that time, he's torn down three hotels, he's built a park, he's built a library, he's built a police station, all where we had terrible, terrible facilities. He took that street and put a new street surface and a new median, and it was all because I went to him and said, I have a problem on Lincoln Avenue, can you help me? Uh, it, it's an amazing thing when you consider that as the mayor throughout these last few days is traveling ward to ward, and they're recounting the things that he has done. And, and it's a checklist that is just unsurpassable in, in any urban setting. He has affected everyone's life in this city and for the better. He has created an environment around the schools that we take for granted today, frankly. When I first chaired the Education Committee in the city of Chicago, for most taxpayers, it was simply a matter of tax bill. It was a matter of sending money down a black hole. It was a matter of never, ever seeing the value of your dollar. And today, since he took over the school system in the mid-90s, you have schools that have been built like this. You have almost every school in the city that has seen some form of capital improvement. You've seen test scores rise. You've seen people fighting to get into Chicago public schools, which was never the case. You've seen some great things that now is commonplace but in those days, never heard of. We went from a period of time where there was a strike every year, and the schools opened and then closed shortly thereafter, to a point where we have peace, labor peace, and real education taking place. So as, as, uh, as we celebrate this day, and I turn off the Moody Blues, I apologize. <laughs> it's another, another, another symbol of my age. But for anyone who's interested, they are going to be at Ravinia on June 11th. <laughs> uh, um, so it gives me great pleasure to introduce an individual who um, I have learned from, who I have enjoyed working with, and who I will miss on a political and personal level, the mayor of the city of Chicago, Richard M. Daly. Thank you, Pat. Good morning. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Pat O'Connor. Uh, I don't carry a phone, but I will be carrying a phone May 17th. Uh, I'll be playing Chicago when it rings. So, uh, uh, But uh, I want to thank uh, Pat O'Connor for his great commitment to public service. Uh, and that's what it's all about. Uh, we, Those who work in government, it doesn't matter what facet of government, we're public servants. We work on behalf of the people of your respective jurisdiction. And we're not entitled servants, we're public servants. Every policeman, every fireman, every teacher, they're public servants. They work for you. Your, you and your parents pay taxes. So they don't work for some organization. <laughs> they work on behalf of the people. And that's the whole transition in America. And America is looking at that. Who do you work for? Do you work for the union? No. You work for me. Simple as that. And I firmly believe in my life that's who you work for. And that's why there's a great change going on in America. 
that all public servants are public servants and they work for the people of the respective jurisdiction. And Pat O'Connor leads that effort as a public servant, as alderman in the 40th Ward. He has done a tremendous job as, as chairman of the education department. He's been to Springfield. He's been to Washington, D.C., talking about education and the options of education give to children. In an urban community, we can turn education around, and we have turned education around, because Barry Rogers and teachers and principals all over this city and parents and non-for-profit and business community said that we, if we don't turn our education system around, Chicago will fail just like many American cities have failed. And I firmly believe the greatest gift that I can give to a child is a learning environment in your home, in your community, in your places of worship, and in school. And so that's the great, great movement we're here in Chicago and throughout the country. There's too much, too much conversation, too much talk, too much strife among adults about education. <laughs> we should listen to the students about education. We should think about them first and foremost and not about adults. And there is where America will be going in that discussion. And I will lead the way with charter schools, contract schools, give competition. I have competition every day in my life. And schools should have just as much competition in a public education system and not to say one size fits all. And here is an example. Many people oppose Northside Prep. They said it's elite school. It's only a special school. <laughs> That's what they accuse us. They accuse us of raising standards. They said this is only for the elite. This is only for the rich. But like anything else, if you don't give young people options in communities, then of course the suburban area keeps growing, our population keeps diminishing, and people say, I can't send my child to that school because it isn't a quality school. And of course, they have moved to the suburbs in the last 50 years of American cities. And I think we're turning the tide uh, throughout the city uh, that we can have good quality education in an urban area like ours, and we're pr very proud of it. And it's still, it's still a long way to go, but I firmly believe is the greatest gift that I can give to a child is the quality of education. That's really important. So I want to congratulate Barry, uh, all the teachers, all the parents, all the students that have done a tremendous job at Northside College Prep. We're truly proud of what you are, and this is an example that we can build all over the city. Uh, uh, good quality schools for every community and to move forward. And to all those who are participating in Arbor Day tree planting, usually falls on my birthday, uh, uh, Jerry and uh, uh, Susan knows that, and Edith and all those who have been with me was all excited because I firmly believe that uh, uh, nature can coexist in an urban community. Usually uh, urban areas have discarded uh, the environment and said that, you know, concrete, steel, we just can't have uh, a beautiful environment that can bring nature into our city in and around schools and the downtown along the lakefront and the river and all the parks. So what we have tried to do with the many, many people behind me, both in the federal government and state, Arnold Rano, the Cook County Forest Reserve, Tom Byrne, uh, uh, Susan Mc, uh, Malik McKenna, all those that have worked so hard in the environment uh, here in the city of Chicago. I look over here and see Bill Curtis, uh, who's been in the forefront of Gateway Green and all about the environment. And so what we try to do is to bring people together and said, how can we really make Chicago the most environmentally friendly city in the world? And that's what we're trying to do. And I want to thank Bank of America. Again, a corporate citizen, they truly get involved, again, example after example. I could, I could cite one press conference after another press conference where Bank of America and volunteers are there. And same with Dominic's, uh, same, same philosophy, same giving back into the community. They're part of the community all over the city. And one example, another example, we're truly fortunate to have corporations that do get involved on these issues concerning us here in the city of Chicago. And I thank them for their great commitment, a partnership with all of us in regards to making Chicago the most environmentally friendly city. Yeah, in, in America, and I always say the world, why not? We have to think bigger, not just the world. Uh, but when I took office, you know, I love trees, and so uh, uh, we have planted over 600,000 trees or more. And when you think of that, uh, our, our urban uh, tree canopy has increased from 11 to 17 percent. This is the equivalent of adding 6,000 acres of new trees. And so whether it's a private developer, whether it's a corporation, asking to plant trees in and around the expressway, in and around 
downtown area uh, to really say to us that uh, Chicago has a 3.5 million trees that remove pollution from the air. And you have to tell people why we plant a tree, reduce pollution from the air, reduce summer cooling costs, and keeps, now think of this one, millions of gallons of stormwater out of the sewer system. That is extremely important for us in the cost. Our urban forest agenda which keeps benefiting every community of the city. All the times we build new schools, renovate schools, and the first thing we do, we think of training, planting trees in and around that school and have the school take care of them, maybe every classroom to take care of them. And each year, unfortunately, because of severe weather, and our weather is now, thank God, on Arbor Day, we have the sun going, uh, severe weather, insect uh, pests, and disease. And uh, I want to thank U.S. Forest uh, Service, the Bureau of Forestry, will plant 2,400 new trees to replace trees lost to the devastating emerald ash borer. These trees were, uh, will be planted by Safer Foundation and Green Corps through a program of the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development to train and employ formerly incarcerated individuals re-entering their community. And we call them re-entry. We, uh, we don't call them ex-offenders, called the re-entry. Uh, uh, they have fallen, now we're going to pick them up and we say, your life is going to be better. And that's what we have to do in America. Think about those individuals. We have the largest reentry program in the country. No other city has come close, no other city has come close to our program that deals with men and women that have formerly been incarcerated that want to straighten their lives out. And this is the only way, and we're very, very proud of this. We're proud now because at Forrest, uh, in Chicago, many homeowners uh, have changed their spending habits beca because of the recession. And we hold off, they hold off many purchases. We have been working to help bring the cost of trees down for Chicago property owners. I want to announce a launch of the Sustainable Backyard Rebate Program by the Department of Environment. Uh, Susan, to further expand our urban forest. This initiative, again, funded by another grant from the U.S. Forest Service, engages private land, uh, landowners to plant and better maintain their trees in residential yards by offering rebates of 50% for trees, native plants, compost bins, and rain barrels. The program will provide 5,000 rebates, encourage new sustainable landscapes on residential property, improving stormwater management in all these communities. Every homeowner can play part in adding sustainability to their front, side yard, or backyard. So we ask uh, the students go back and talk to your parents and, and, and ask them to participate in all these programs. As we face economic challenges, it's more important than ever that government work with for-profit and non-for-profit sections uh, deal with progress of our city. So we need collaboration. You have to bring people together. It isn't government alone cannot do that. Morton Arboretum has been a leader in tree science and tree advocacy. Uh, continue to serve Chicago by providing educational resources, regional planning, as seen in the recent 2010 Tree Census Project and Urban Forestry Strategy. For this Arbor Day, Morton Arboretum is hanging value tags on trees around Chicago to proclaim their environmental worth to our city. So you really have to educate people how important trees are to our community and to the world. Trees are one of the few things that increase in value as they grow and age, which is all more reason we need to engage Chicago residents in caring and understanding why we are planting trees. I don't know how many phone calls I get. Mayor, can you cut down my tree? And of course, <laughs> I can't. I just can't. I just, uh, <laughs> The aldermen are at my back. Community goes blazer. And I just said, why? Why is it? Well, uh, they're affecting my sewer. We check it. They're not affecting your sewer. They're not breaking up the sidewalk. Things like that we hear all the time. So it's always an ongoing effort in regards to uh, trees in Chicago. Open lands, tree keepers train and lead residents in planting trees, combating invasive sex and uh, insects. Boy, that's a great line, isn't it? <laughs> Boy, I'm not at Northwestern University, am I? No. <laughs> Performing other <laughs> vital tree care in our neighborhoods. <laughs> uh, tree keepers also stamp out Asian longhorn, uh, longhorn beetle with community uh, tree surveys. Continue to fight the gypsy moth with trapping projects. And really great. Chicago Gateway Green, uh, uh, Bill Curtis, has support by corporate sponsors de demonstrating the ability of business 
to vote resources and volunteers in planting trees and maintaining green spaces. Gateway Greens Tree Farms and Expressway Partnership projects have greatly enhanced the livability of our city. We enjoy our further generations. So we have different companies and individuals sponsor uh, the upkeep all along the expressways, which are really important for us. Today, we pointed out we have volunteers from Bank of America and Dominic's working with students to plant over 50 trees here at Northside College Prep. These trees will not only help restore this location, serve to protect the river from pollutants, but also become part of an outdoor classroom for the school. Urban Habitat Chicago is instrumental in designing the campus project as an interactive model of site sustainability. If you want to keep the type of work that we're capable of, just take a look around at all the gardens we are planning. We continue to work closely with Chicago Public Schools to say that this is your property. You have the responsibility as students and those that work here to keep the property uh, the best uh, site, especially dealing with the environment. To develop programs from K through 12, how important the environment is in and around the school. After School Matters and Chicago Conservation Corps Student Club programs are playing major roles in all the Chicago public schools and other greening opportunities for, for students, teaching them sound environmental practices and giving them vested interest in the community. I'd like to recognize another group important to our environment, the beekeepers, and their efforts to support nature. Uh, President Obama and Michelle Obama was in town, and of course, I had about 15, I had about a half hour, I talked to them, and about 10 of those were all about the beekeepers of Chicago. So I just wanted to, we put a good line in there. And, and uh, the city's commitment to building beehives on City Hall, Gallery 37, Cultural Center, McCormick Bird Sanctuary, other urban agricultural sites have resulted in more beehives and healthier bee populations for the environment. Uh, there are now 150 beehives in Chicago producing over 15,000 pounds of honey each year. Programs such as Sweet Beginnings, Chicago Honey Co-op, Garfield Park Conservatory Alliance are creating job opportunities, educating the public about the importance of bees for honey pollinization. Lastly, I want to thank all the organizations who have agreed to join us in Chicago Trees Initiative as we work to improve the size, the health, diversity, stewardship of our urban forests. Our program can serve as a model for other cities around the world. If we, if we uh, continue to work and plan together, all of us uh, will make our city much cleaner, more beautiful, and more environmentally friendly, and those things benefit future generations and I and I wish all the students the best in your careers uh, I hope you realize the opportunities you're receiving you'll be up here behind me or standing right here talking about the environment in different capacities wherever you are or about education those are the two of the most important aspects of life in America is education and the environment and, and you're really fortunate to be attending a wonderful school, but also to see the people behind me, all, all of us, both in the federal agencies, the county, the state, the not-for-profits and corporations, all work together in collaboration. And that's what we have to have more in this country. And to say to you that America is a great country, uh, we're, we're getting negative about you know the future and another generation you hear people talking about but i am more convinced that your generation can do much better things than my generation have done i firmly believe that because if we don't then we have failed as a country we have failed as a country as a country of immigrants we have failed our parents and grandparents that they had the same dreams and ambitions for myself or, or grandchildren, whatever it was, and we have to really build as, as, as adults confidence in America. We should not be worried about the rest of the world. We should just say to ourselves that we have come through wars and, and great depressions, and we come through with it. And now we're in, a, we're in an attitude that we don't think America is going to be so great. I disagree with that because if you look here at these students, they would do things that will improve our education, improve the environment, and improve the quality of life more than all of us have done presently. And I wish you the best and congratulate you and Barry Rogers and all those wonderful teachers and all the students that to me, uh, uh, to me I think that's what life is all about, to see your generation come forward. Uh, I congratulate you, and it's been my great honor to be the mayor of the city of Chicago. I love the Arbor Day. I think everybody knows that uh, uh, about uh, what this city is all about. It isn't the big press conferences you had. It's, it's just like maybe planting a tree and meeting a beekeeper. 
and meeting those who are really concerned about the environment that really have influenced me as mayor and keep the passion and keep your passion about a city and about its people even in difficult circumstances that you know that people are out there are doing the thing that are necessary to improve the quality of life thank you very much